Hey y'all, it's Naja Iman. Welcome or welcome back to Light the World, a podcast for young Christians on a mission to light the world. If you're new here, hey babe, thanks for stopping by. If you're not new, hey babe, thanks for coming back. Today's episode is titled, God Does Not Remember Your Past. Okay, we finna get into some good stuff today because, mm, mm, ooh, ooh, the revelations this past week that I got, good stuff okay we're gonna be talking about repentance renewal transformation and the mysterious work of god specifically focusing on the story of paul and some other people in the bible but before we get started the song of the day is nothing but the blood of jesus by bb winans who love old school gospel i got rebaptized last september so it's been about it's been about a few months since I got rebaptized. Um, five or six, maybe. I'm. I, do the math, okay? <laughs> um, it's been it's been some time, and each day I, I I I realize more and more that who I am today is nowhere near the person I was last year, the person I was two years ago, the person I was four years ago, the person I was three months ago. You know, I'm constantly evolving and growing to the point where when I look at old pictures of myself when I look at my old videos I don't recognize the girl I I see and it's it's an it's a good thing it's a great thing such a great thing that I can only give glory to God for doing such a good work in me and continuing to do a good work in me Philippians 1 6 says I am certain that God who began the good work in you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ returns God has God has begun a good work in me and he's not even done yet. I can never underestimate the power of God because he took me from one place. Ooh, and brought me to a completely different place in the span of a few months, you guys, like in the span of a year, like that's crazy. We ain't even gotten into the video yet. Like, (laughs) hold on. Never underestimate the power of God. Okay. that's, That's honestly like the theme of this video. Never underestimate the power of God. My previous podcast episode about being unbothered. It reached a lot of people and I'm so grateful that it did. I got so much positive feedback. I also got a few negative comments, which inspired this episode. I'm never going to ignore positive comments to jump to highlighting negative comments. I like to, you know, keep a balance in everything I do. And I noticed that I got a good amount of negative comments um, on that video, which I just found ironic because I was talking about being unbothered. And here I hear, hear, hear people go commenting stupidity under that video, I felt like it was low-key, like a test, you know what I mean? I noticed a lot of people were commenting on my past, you know, and saying things like, oh girl, because I remember when you was worldly, I remember when you was a little worldly, weren't we all in the world at one point? Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, work with me here, because I'm getting somewhere. Somebody took it upon themselves to scroll down my video, long, 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 long thread of videos, right? Go back to a video from a year ago that I posted, when I was, before I was like saved, when I was lukewarm, <laughs> they found that video, they, they opened that video. I'm assuming they came from my, my most recent unbothered video, right? They commented something like, this is the girl that's talking about following Jesus. No, thank you. I clicked on the wrong page. In my head, I'm like, this is what I need. Thank you. I'm gonna pray for you, but thank you for inspiring my next podcast episode. Some people are so threatened by your growth that all they can do is weaponize your past against you. And if this happens, I want you to recognize it as a tactic of the enemy, okay? Let's talk about how once you become made new in Christ, once you step into a new life in Christ, the enemy will literally do anything and everything to try to pull you back, weigh you down in shame, condemn you, have you questioning your faith and your salvation and questioning the power and the realness of God. For someone to to, to see this new version of me that I'm showing voluntarily, to the internet, see me using my platform to speak out about God's goodness and grace and mercy and not acknowledge that, but only acknowledge the past version of me. That is a tactic of the enemy. Satan has so many tactics that he uses to get Christians to fall short. We're talking about saved believers. And I can make an entire episode on that if you want me to, but in this episode we're going to be talking about how we're going to talk about the tactic of the tactic of doubt that the devil loves. He loves planting seeds of doubt. 
in the Christian's mind, seeds that will breed shame. He will weaponize your past, your shortcomings, your past sins against you to make you believe that you're not really saved, to make you believe that God has not done a work in you, a good work in you, that he is actively working in you and constantly refining in you until the day that Jesus returns. He will have you believing that you are faking your sanctification, you are faking your holiness to get you into a loop of confusion and self-doubt and ultimately to get you to take your eyes off of God and put them back onto yourself so that you're no longer chasing after God because you've become so critical of yourself, you've become so focused on yourself that your focus is no longer on God anymore. That's honestly Satan's goal. Like he just doesn't want us to have our gaze fixed on God. You shouldn't be listening to lies of the enemy in the first place. If anyone ever tries to throw your past in your face as a way to shame you, just understand that as a tactic of the enemy and just pray for them because it's a spirit in them that is working against you that wants to see you fall, that wants to see you fail. Humans remember your past. The enemy, that is his ammo. Your past, your past sins, that's all he has on you. Of course, he's gonna use that to bring you down, bro. God does not remember your past. And he literally tells us this in Hebrews 10, 17. And their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. But that's why it's so important to know the word, right? And to fight with your sword, which is the word of God. You can't fight the enemy with the human power. You have to fight it with the word. And if you don't know the word, how are you gonna fight? When you come into Christ, God is not gonna hold your past against you. He's not going to throw it in your face, try to shame you, none of that. When you come to Christ, you're free. You've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You've been made new. Whoever you were last year, two years ago, three years ago, that's no longer you. God doesn't know that person. God doesn't see that person when he looks at you. He doesn't see your sins anymore, right? He doesn't see that liar. He doesn't see that. That, that thief, he doesn't see that promiscuous woman, he doesn't see that manipulator, that drug addict, that idolater. He sees his son that died on the cross so that you would be free. And the crazy thing about the enemy, he think he's so slick, he'll be like, do you really think God forgave you? Do you really think you've changed? Do you really think God loves you? And God is saying, there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, okay? God is saying, everyone has sinned and fallen short of my standard, yet in my grace, I've made you right in my sight through Jesus Christ. So yes, God is saying, yes, I love you. Yes, I forgive you. Yes, I care about you. Yes, you've been made new. Yes, you are a new creation. Yes, I see my son when I see you. That version of, of you that other people have in their heads, that's not the version of you that I see when I look at you. He's not holding your past against you. Your past was nailed on the cross. I'm getting to the story about Paul, okay? Stick with me. Um, when you start to hear things, you start to hear things. Think, who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that you were not loved? Who told you that you were not forgiven? Who told you that you were not cared for? Who told you that you were not cleansed? Because God never said those things. Find the scripture where he says the complete opposite and fight back with that. Defeat the lies of the enemy with your sword. The story of the woman who was caught in adultery. I literally love that story because <laughs> Jesus was not having it, bro. The first he brought that woman to him because they, they, they thought he was gonna condemn her. He said, he who was without sin, cast the first stone. No stones was cast. He said, have any of your accusers condemned you? No? Okay, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Nobody touched you. You've been acquitted. Go and sin no more. God did not condemn this woman. He did not hold her past against her. There will always be someone. Always. There will always be someone ready to throw your past in your face. Because some people are just small-minded like that. They cannot handle seeing growth in their face, bro. They can't handle seeing it for whatever reason. That's none of your business, right? That's none of your business. All you know is that you've changed, bro. By the grace of God, you've, you've grown. If somebody is so immature and just, just unevolved to, to bring up your past, your flaws, what a pity. There's this quote, I don't know who, who, who made this quote, who said this quote, but I always see it on, on Instagram and Twitter. When you've accepted your flaws, no one can use them against you. When you've accepted, when you've accepted that you were once a sinner, when you accepted that you were once, you once were outside of, of God's covering, when you've accepted that you were 
that you're not perfect, no one can use that against you because all have sinned and fallen short of the, the glory, the glory of God. All have fallen short. But the, the amazing thing is, is God gives everybody, everybody a chance to come to him and be cleansed. Just like everyone has fallen short, everyone has an opportunity and a chance to come back into God's marvelous light. Like it's okay. There's a chance for everyone to be acquitted. It's just up to you to take that opportunity to be acquitted. So I like to look at the life of Paul. Paul's one of my favorite apostles in the Bible because his story is just so, in, it's so inspiring. I love how, how how Paul's story started out as him being a completely different person, even under a different name. He's, he didn't even start out as Paul, dude. He started out as Saul. But even when he was killing Christians, condemning Christians, dragging Christians, to to get arrested god still had a plan for him to be saved god used saul transformed him into paul had a plan for him to become one of the greatest apostles and writers in the bible and bring so many so many people to christ the fact that paul saul paul was out here killing christians and god still saw fit to use him like that was a, a part of the plan i can't imagine how many people judged paul through his past mm -hmm. in his face maybe every single day like you're a christian now you was just killing christians how are you trying to tell me about jesus christ when you was literally persecuting anybody that professed that he was <laughs> the son of god like that he was the messiah get out of my face with that oh my gosh it's just so crazy like I, i'm gonna juxtapose that comment that i got on the on my youtube video the one that was like this is the girl that's talking about following jesus imagine what they used to say about paul dude this is the guy that's talking about following jesus you used to kill christians i ain't listening to you you is not sent from god i'm not listening to you because who you was yesterday you are not able to grow out of that version of him and become a new person. Really what people what people say when they when they um hold your past over your head is I don't I don't believe that humans are capable of growth and change and restoration. But my God is a very powerful good God and he can do. Oh my gosh, he can work mysteriously in the most mysterious of ways. Who would have thought that a man that used to kill Christians would become one of the most significant figures in the Bible next to Jesus, of course. That's just how God works. It's just, it's just, he just, ooh, he's so crafty. Like his, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways, bro. Cause how can, how could anyone think that that would be Paul's fate? A, a, a servant of the Lord, a slave? of the lord this man that used to kill christians like what never underestimate the power of god god did not hold paul's past against him he actually used it he used paul's past as a as as, as a part of his testimony for for all for the glory of him he uses our lives as as a vessel to just glorify him more and more god is so cool like he get all the glory he like i'm head huncho around here anything you do is going to be used for my glory because all things work together for the good of those who love god and are called according to his purpose paul was called according to his purpose so everything worked out for the good the bad worked out for the good the good worked out for the good the fact that god did not condemn paul for his past just proves the love of God is so vast. We can't even understand it with our human brains. Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? But he didn't condemn him. He convicted him and, and, and transformed him into his image. Ananias told Paul, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak for you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. Jesus chose Paul, knowing what he had done in his past. He chose him. He saw something in him. Even Paul doubted himself. He said, but Lord, they certainly know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. But Jesus still, he still chose him and said, go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. This is why I hate cancel culture because it, it just sends a message out to all humans everywhere that humans are not capable of change and i don't care how how far along someone has gotten in their journey i'm gonna go digging up their past to bring them right back to where they were in that moment they made that mistake in that moment they committed the sin i'm gonna make them relive that moment every single day if i have to but you know what's so great about my god 
God won't cancel you. He'll cancel out your past. He'll cancel out your sin. He'll blot all that out, bro. Make you clean if you go to him. He will make you so clean, bro. He will cancel all that out, but he won't cancel you. He'll cancel out everything that's not like him. Everything that doesn't look like him. Everything that doesn't glorify him. But he'll keep, he'll keep you. He'll just make you into a new you. That's my God. I'm 21 years old, you guys. I'm turning 22 in two days, God willing, March 7th. Happy early birthday to me. By the time I upload this, it'll be my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Um, I literally just became an adult two seconds ago. I still don't feel like I'm an adult, to be honest. COVID messed everything up. So I really still feel like I'm about 17, but whatever. You guys, if you know, you know that I grew up on the internet. Like I posted my first YouTube video in 2017. I was 15 years old or something. I documented my entire high school journey, my college experience, my ups and downs, my flaws, my mistakes, my breakups, my fights. Y'all saw the story times and they was ghetto for sure. But it's my story, right? All of that I willingly decided to share. I was just having fun with it. I never knew that God had a bigger plan and purpose for me and my entire platform, just even outside of YouTube, like just me as a person, as a brand quote unquote i really don't like calling myself a brand but like at this point whatever i never knew what god's plan was for me but he uses our lives as testimonies my whole entire life is a testimony to the goodness of god the power of god my entire life is a testimony you can't try to embarrass me or think you caught my tea by pulling up my bass like everything is out there everything is out there to see god still forgave me so that's a testament to his grace and his cleansing, cleansing power. There's literally no condemnation for anyone who is in Christ Jesus by trying to pull up one's past, throw it in their face. I was like, ah, gotcha moment. Who are you fooling but yourself? Who are you hurting but yourself? I could wipe everything, bro. But why would I do that? My life is my testimony. You go from the, the beginning of my journey to now you see that transformation that shows you the power of god the entire purpose of my life is to glorify god if you see anything good in me anything at all it's not me bro it's jesus that's my testimony whether you've been here this whole time or you just found my channel you can see where i started versus where i'm at now polar opposites all the glory goes to god like all of it yeah anyone the sun sets free is free indeed and that is on period <laughs> okay do you trust in God enough to believe what he says is true? Do you believe him when he says their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Do you believe that God does not remember your sins anymore? Do you truly believe that in your heart? Because he said it and everything that God says is true. Stop listening to lies. Maybe this episode was for me. Maybe it was for someone else. I pray that whoever needed to hear this message heard it, received it, and puts it into practice. Believe what God says. Their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. I'm gonna read this last verse in Hebrews 10, 21 through 22, about persevering into the end when Jesus returns. Being able to walk confidently into God's kingdom, into God's arms. The header said, uh, says a call to persevere. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new life, giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. We're able to enter into the, the most holy place. Not because of anything we did, but because of Jesus Christ and the blood that he has washed us in. You believe that you've been purified with the, 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 the blood of Jesus. Do you believe that? Because that's all it takes. It's all about your belief. It's all about faith. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. Do you believe that God is not holding your past against you? Or do you still walk around in shame? You know that shame's not coming from God. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're listening on Apple Pods or Spotify or wherever else, give me five stars if you feel so inclined. And I will talk to y'all all in my next episode. Love you guys. Bye.